Okay, this will be a video for section 2.1 of a Triola stats textbook. And this is going to be on frequency distributions. Let's look at the definition. A frequency distribution, or basically a frequency table, shown here, shows data that are partitioned among several categories or the classes. These are the classes. By listing the categories along with the numbers or the frequencies of the data values in each of them. So for example, the frequency is the number of drive up times that fall within a certain time range. It's like tallies. So between 75 and 124 seconds, there were 11 different cars that f came through the drive through at McDonald's, etc. Right? All right, so let's look at some vocab words about this so we can talk a little bit about it more. Lower class limits. They're the smallest number. So in this example, the lower class limit would be 75, 125, 175. The upper would obviously be the other number, 124, 174. So lower and upper, smaller and larger numbers for the limits. Now there's a little gap in between those numbers, right? You see between 124 and 125, there's a gap of one, right? Well, the class boundary is in that gap, and it's the middle of that gap. So between 124 and 125, there is a gap of 1, right? So that divided by 2 or divided in half is going to be where the class boundary exists at 0.5. So 124.5, 174.524, that's where they're going to meet. It's called the class boundary. Class midpoints are going to be the middle of the classes. This is where you actually add up the numbers in a class and divide by 2. So turn on your calculator, 124 plus 75 equals, and then divide by 2. Make sure you get the 199, you equal it, 99.5. And then you can see that there will be the same between 125 and 174, adding and dividing by 2. So you'll notice that 99.5, 149.5, etc. is the class midpoint. The class width is going to be the difference of the two consecutive lower class limits. So in this case, it would be 125 minus 75, right? 125 minus 75, or 50. And that would be the same to the next one, 50. 50, 50. So it's that difference. And what's nice about that difference is for the class midpoints, you'll notice that it's 50 between them as well. So you find one and then you can get the other one. A common mistake is that with a class width, it's not from 75 to 124. So it's not from lower to upper, it's lower to lower. It's how far, including that little class boundary area, so 125 to 75. So make sure you're getting the whole class width. A variation of a basic frequency distribution is a relative frequency distribution, or percentage of frequency distribution. So the relative frequency distribution would be in a decimal, and then the percentage is in the percentage form. So it's when each class's frequency is replaced by a relative frequency, or proportion, or percentage. Okay, so over here we see our McDonald's times and frequency, and then we say, okay, what's the total of all the cars that came through? We add them up, and we see that there are 50 of them. We add the frequency up, and see there's 50. That's the total. Then to get this, what we call a relative frequency, we take however many came in between this time frame here, and divide it by its whole, right? 11 over 50, 0.22 or 22 percent. 24 divided by 50, 0.48 or 48 percent. So this is creating now a showing you the parts or the, the relative frequency as a percentage and these all add up to 100 or very close, right? They should add up to 100 or very close because sometimes you have a rounding error. Let's say you have to go out and make this 49 because it rounds off, right? So you're either going to be right at 100% or just a little less or more. But it's really easy to, to do this in um, Excel. You can do it by calculator 
by hand like this, but if you get a lot of them, then you want to use something to help you out. Okay, in Excel, it's pretty easy to make a relative frequency table. We just start over here, down here actually, let's get the sum of them. So equal sign and then sum, parenthesis left, and then highlight what you're taking the sum of. Hit enter, and I got 50. So you could have done this before to find out uh, what the total was, right? Then what you're going to do is you want to make sure you're dividing it by that 50. So I'm going to do equals again. This cell here, I'd click it, divided by, and then the cell with the 50. But I'm going to have to put a dollar sign in here. And the reason why I put a dollar sign is it keeps that uh, pointing to the D9 cell as I drag down. Because I don't want to keep repeating that. I can just drag that all the way down here. And it does it by itself. You see it's still pointing to D9, still pointing to D9 but the numbers in front are moving down down this way. And then just to show you, if we sum this up, right, this should be 100, which is 1, 100. So finding the relative frequency in Excel is pretty easy. You just gotta find the total and then create your part and pull it down and you have your relative frequency. Now coming back here, we also have something called the cumulative frequency distribution, which basically adds them up as you go down. So notice we had 11 over here, then 24 for this one, and 10, but look at over here. Less than 125 seconds, there were 11, right? Now less than 175, well it was 11 and the 24, so that's how we got 35. Less than 225, well it was the 10, the 24, and the 11, which is 45, right? 10 more than that. So you can do that here as well. Let's do the cumulative. Cumulative means you're adding, okay? You're adding them up as you go down. So that's not super hard. Maybe I'll erase, move, erase this one here. But it's gonna be equal to the first one, right? First one's gonna be equal because that's what it is. Now on the second one is where you do your work. They're going to have this cell here plus the cell behind it. So I go equals this cell plus this cell. 35. 11 plus 24 is 35. Now as I come down here, it's going to be this cell plus the 35 because we're going to keep adding down, right? We want all, everything below it. So it's going to be the 10 plus the 35. But I don't need to keep doing it, I can just do this one time where I have it, this left one plus the one above it, and just pull it down. So as I pull it down, it adds them up, and it should become 50 at the end, right? Because that's how many total there are. So this would be the cumulative frequency, and you should get to the total number that there are, just as shown here. There's a video here to watch me do it in a math lab problem if you'd like. Uh, it does the same kind of thing. All right, and then the last part is um, they may ask, does this data up here no have a normal distribution? So this is what they're really interested in. They're kind of getting these tables, and then they can make graphs of them, and you can look at them uh, different ways, with the frequency, cumulative frequency, and then in the uh, relative frequency as well. So let's look at this chart of a sun's height. So they're in inches, 60, 62, 64, etc. This curve is considered a normal curve. Okay, that's the key, normal curve. The data is mostly fitting a normal distribution. It's low here, there aren't as many um, suns that are 60 inches, 61, 62, 63, 64, but there's more in the middle. More people are this from like 66 to 72. And then again, there aren't that many that are that tall, right? 78 inches, that's very tall. So you have what we call a normal distribution where it starts low, gradually gets high, it peaks out somewhere in the middle here, and then it comes back down and kind of mirrors the same thing on the other side. So this would be, this line here in blue is the normal curve. This red is the graph of information of sun's heights. We would say this is approximately normal. It's symmetric on both sides. It's not exactly, because look at how this goes above it, but approximately the shape is normal. And that's it. I'll be kind of asking some questions about this now. 
does this uh, look like a normal graph? They would say is it exactly normal, which rarely happens, or is it approximately normal? Approximately normal, remember, it starts low, high, and low. Kind of has that same kind of thing. Okay, good luck with the homework. If you have any questions, please post in discussion.